Okay, welcome back to the motherhood in 12 months. The May challenge is, drum roll, the colour red. <laughs> Do you see what I mean, Creeper? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Creeper shoots in black and white and I think is actually um, changing her viewfinder so she's actually photographing in black and white so but I've got an idea for you at the end of this creeper so I will share with you at the end so do bear with me okay uh red has more emotional associations than any other color and this is a fiery hue that's linked to passion love and desire as well as power anger and rage red is inherently exciting and naturally draws attention and this is what makes it really exciting in photography and in art because it definitely draws your attention um, and I did read, which I haven't, actually I'm not reading out now, I did read somewhere that um, after black and white, the first colour you actually see um, as, as a baby is red, which I found really interesting. Anyway, on the internet there's loads of stuff, so do go um, research, but I'm going to give you these starting points to, um, to start you off with. Okay, just a few um, kind of well-known photographers, just to kind of, um, I don't know, share with you, I guess. Uh, this is a very, very famous photograph called The Red Ceiling. Uh, it's from 1973 and it's one of William Eccleston's most iconic images. So he said, I know that red was the most difficult colour to work with. A little red is usually enough, but to work with an entire red surface was a challenge. I don't know of any totally red pictures except in advertising. Bearing in mind this was in the 70s. Uh, the photograph is sti still powerful today and it shocks you every time. Eggleston claims that, ne uh, that he never took the same picture twice. Uh, this kind of snapshot style, which is what he's um, well known for, uh, resulted in images that were rebellious, uh, uncomfortable, and that's not easy to decipher. Uh, those of you that were on the um, uh, documentary workshop, I think we had a look at his, his, uh, some of his work, um, but I'm kind of a big fan of his. Okay, Martin Parr, as you all know, I do love his photos. He uses color, like, King of it, I think he uses it really well. Um, as you can see in these pictures, red just pops. You know, like it, even though all the other colours are still quite striking, red just really pops. Um, and for me, he's he's very well known for his um, like he did lots of like Butlins photographs. Again, if you want to go off and research him, um, but colour and red is definitely what he's kind of very well known for. He also did this series recently, and he's actually released a new book uh, where he documented like dreary um, Scottish landscapes um, with um, flashes of um, post box red in them, which I love. I just think it's like, um, I don't know, I just find it really interesting. Um, he said, uh, when you're in the middle of nowhere in a bleak landscape and, and in wild weather, these little post boxes are strangely comforting. They are a strong symbol of our culture, um, a sign that other people are around, that life is going on and that you are connected to the world. Um, and red, actually, the the opposite or the complementing colour of red is green. Um, so I, I wonder if that works really well. And obviously, you've got blue. So they're the primary colours as well. Okay, Ga Guy Borodin, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, he's basically, um, well, he was a massive fashion photographer in the 1970s. Um, and he produced a spread of vibrantly coloured um, images, mainly for Vogue. So red's used, you know, big time in fashion. Again, it's got element of kind of um kind of danger but sexy you know and i think that's why a lot of fashion photography especially in the 70s used it um used it quite a lot uh okay i just wanted to kind of show you this um red is considered the heaviest color um i it also depends what other colors are in the frame and what it's going to complement or be against um but red is a really powerful weapon in your uh, photography it can make a photo pop because it draws your attention okay I'm gonna like um, flick through now some other images which just for your inspiration things that I've kind of come you know just discovered on the net um, again please go off and do your own kind of research and you know find your own inspiration but just kind of to have a look at these different things um, I mean, obviously, like composition wise, this works. And I think that's why you need to be really careful with red, especially if you're using it for composition, because it, it definitely emphasizes um, this photo. It, and this one as well, I mean, it, 
this is very different like this is consumed by the red hair it's almost like she's gone back in the womb and it's comfortable and it's cozy and it's really uh, snuggly whereas here it's just a pop on her dress but how much that vibrant pop um i don't know it just makes her uh stand out it also gives the whole picture because it's like against a lot of white it um it really stands out and it kind of gives a bit more of her character like playfulness obviously you can see that of what she's doing as well again here just popping out i mean this could almost i mean and it's not and i don't advise black and white with pop of red i really highly recommend you don't do that <laughs> um but this is a color photo and it's it's dark green um with the red again this would look really cute uh you know if it was a black um umbrella but it definitely just emphasizes how red just makes something pop um it doesn't have to be bright red we can look at um subjects and objects that are red uh, red hair red squirrel um and i'm sure there's lots of other it doesn't have to be the bright color red but have the, the theme is red so it's entirely up to you how you interpret this uh red wine someone has to do the red wine um also just food photography you, know, you can really play with the objects you can style things you don't have to style things just literally i'm just saying just have fun um now like you know the theme like hopefully like in the next few days you can just walk around and just start noticing red i will find these i remember when we did the window challenge in january we really all, all of a sudden really started looking into bloody other people's windows um, and I do really like that about these kind of challenges that you start looking um, for the um, ideas or subjects or, you know, you start playing with that theme um, when you're out and about. Again, I just abstract as well. You know, I, I do think, you know, the motherhood, you know, I don't know. I just think we can just have fun with it. Um, it doesn't have to. The, the fun about this theme, and that's why I said it is fun, is it doesn't have to have story. It can have story, but it doesn't have to. It can be abstract. It can, there's literally, there's no rules apart from the color red. I really like this. I just like, you know, just a little bit of a hint of red. Again, what I was saying earlier, you know, you don't have to have a full frame. It can just be one little hint of red. Um, it can be a dress or it could be, um, toenails or you know it, it can be something really small but just to experiment to see where it draws your eye um, and just to kind of emphasize you can go completely as abstract as you like <laughs> um, again just fun playing with um, kind of like this isn't a flat lay but playing if you want to instead of you know we've done lots of documentary and stuff like that I think red works extremely well in documentary but if you wanted to do something more still life and something more um, you know, playing with different settings on your camera and stuff like that. This is a great, a great opportunity to do it. Um, this just, you know, looking at documentary and I know um, a lot of you did some street photography, which, you know, I was really inspired by um, and just going out there on the street and finding the color red is quite exciting. Uh, and again, the same here. Um, okay, just to kind of, I think this is, yeah. So just to kind of wrap up, um, the colour red is the colour of blood, sacrifice, danger, violence. It's also passion, sex, anger, fire, destruction. It's also beauty, sunset, flower, royalty. Um, the vibrant colour is, you know, well known because it captures our attention. It captures the viewer's attention. Um, Coca-Cola, you know, the brand uses red for a reason. Um, so yeah, I love this picture. Okay, that is it in a nutshell. The theme is red. Do look for strong composition. I think especially if you're going down the documentary route, definitely um, composition will be key. Um, again, have a look at Martin Parr's work. Um, anything goes, absolutely anything. Abstract, portrait, documentary, food, whatever you want. Uh, the main thing is to have fun. I can imagine the Facebook um, page on this one blowing up because I do think it's, it's possibly less challenging in many ways, but it'll be more challenging to, to nail it, I think, um, and to choose, oh, don't forget to ag us, I've put, uh, don't forget to tag us as usual in motherhood and the motherhood workshops. Right, I'm gonna come back to you, and I'm gonna especially talk to Creeper. Mm 
Hi. Okay, um, before I talk to Cooper, actually, are there any questions on the theme red? Are you not all quiet? Go on, Belen. Give me something. Go on! I dare you. <laughs> no? No one? No, I did. I, I was taking photos of post boxes today. <laughs> As Emily saw my stories, I and love it. I'm I, I'm drawn to them massively, but I'll have to find something else now. Well, perfect. You've already got something in your in your kind of red bank, shall we call mm. it? Um, I can imagine this is just going to be one photo, but it can imagine come up with a series. Do you know what I mean? I think it would look really nice as a series, whatever you come up with. But we will look at doing, you know, submitting a series at one point. But for this one, you know, I just want to focus, just, just want to have a bit of a breathing and just really have fun with, with Red. And, you know, it's really exciting because every time I come up with a theme and, I don't know, the Facebook group goes crazy and everyone's images are so different and I think it's so brilliant. And that's why I was saying to Kaz um, before, I said the photo that she put in um, for this for last month, I thought was so different and it really like pushed boundaries and you know it was totally out of the box of what you'd think of documentary and that's what i really liked about it by the way sophie well done Yay. thank you thank you wow that was a real surprise oh epic picture. well it's it's thanks to the group because i was really torn as what to put in and seagulls oh. was the advice so thank you everyone that was a well, team effort <laughs> well done everyone no such a good picture well done you like you must be really proud uh, yeah, he was a very, um, do you know, it was quite easy to get it because that seagull was so determined to get food, he just strutted up and down. <laughs> so <laughs> I spotted it one day and I was like, that's going to be a good photo tomorrow. Just great leave a bread come out. <laughs> well yeah. done. That's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions about the theme red? Anyone got any ideas? Emma D, you had some ideas? Would you like to share it with the group? Thanks. My first idea when she was like, yeah, it's going to be red at, well, I don't know, four o'clock this afternoon. My brain automatically went to my children falling over and blood. So possibly not coming to me for ideas. I was like, oh, do I cut myself in the name of art? No, probably not. So no, I don't know where I'm going to go with it yet. But that was literally where my brain went first of all. So yeah, don't come to me for ideas. <laughs> what the, you know, a blood, bloody knees, but Period. Like, just wait a minute for the salon. Let mommy get a camera out. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you can try that this weekend with pomegranate, and he just went all over, it splashed all over the table. It looked like there'd been a murder. And my husband said, if the next topic is color, this would be a good one. So now I'm gonna be smashing oh my pomegranate God. all over the walls in the name of art. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in tune with your household, Belen. <laughs> like red post box and pomegranate. Okay, right. So if you choose to kind of rebel against red, looking at you, Creeper, and decide to say, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> Emma D texting me. <laughs> You're on screen. <laughs> um, Hi. If, if you decide um, that you are a hard or um, black and white person and you don't, you know, colour is not your thing. Do, what I would say, I'm basically talking to Creeper right now, is experiment with the colour red, but in black and white. So obviously you're not going to have a red picture, but in black and white, red is like black, black. Um, and so quite often, um, black and white film photographers would have like red filters, um, like put on their, on, on top of their, you know, lens kind of thing. And it just changes the whole kind of tone so even though i'm saying your uh, final photo isn't going to have red in it but what i would like you to do is still do this challenge and submit a black and white photo if you want um but photograph things in red um objects or something that's red and see what it looks like in black and white because i, I still think that's going to be really exciting just because i for you to start understanding how colour affects black and white and, and like each shade, you know, um, because red is black rather than grey kind of thing. So, yeah, it would be quite exciting, if, even so, you know, that there won't be any colour. Sorry, does that make sense, Krikon? Yeah, I think it will help me 
with my viewfinder finding how colors work as well in black and white on my viewfinder while taking picture that will help actually perfect Brilliant. okay anyone else ideas that they want to share we've got two more minutes let's fill it with something <laughs> Um, Sophie, tell us more about how you loved listening to yourself being the winner. Of I'm wondering amazing. how many people, I'm wondering how many mums will finally get a red lipstick, let their child have a red lipstick just to see what mess is made to get an amazing photo. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Or how many of you are going to dress up as David Bowie, perhaps? I mean, <laughs> looking at you, Sarah, in Scotland, I'm not sure. Just yeah you can see it <laughs> sorry sophie i totally no no that's uh, yeah it was very exciting i was driving i was listening as i was driving so i was like Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh that's brilliant yeah. oh well, well done you but the feedback um, for the whole group is always so fascinating you learn yeah. so much just listening to everyone's picture and the feedback that's what i find i'm just on at the moment and it does it does go on a bit and i'm really like i've tried to keep it to half an hour and it doesn't so but the beauty of it is, you know, it's not live. You can just scroll till you get to Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about it because if you're interested, like I am, like Sophie just said she is, then you're going to watch it all. If you're not, then you can whiz through until you see your picture. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think it's length is a problem. Yeah, cool. I think it's just really fascinating to kind of hear what people see in those photos and how they interpret it. I think it's really fascinating. So, yeah, long is good. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, and her um her point about the viewer bringing stuff to the pit the photograph was quite interesting today. Mm. Um, she talks about her bringing her own experiences, which was quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, and I think that also comes down to because it's really interesting hearing different people have their opinion. Obviously, you're listening to my voice, and I know it's just I've got my style and my opinion, and it's really interesting hearing other people's because someone else would have chosen a completely different picture and someone else would have chosen a different picture so it's just really yeah it, I think it is fascinating hearing other creatives talk about work kind of thing, so. I think that's really interesting when you because you've got different person doing it each month you can't sort of um you can't cheat and be like oh I know that they're really into this or whatever like you just because you don't we don't know who it's going to be that judges it and I find it just so interesting I, I mean I watch them even though I haven't been submitting stuff so I don't think you need to oh, worry that's about, that's that's really about the length because I think you learn from it you see and yeah well it was really funny because I thought that she was going to choose Ellie's purely because uh, like Ellie's photograph reminded me of her style um but you know, it, it's just like completely different. So it's what it's what people see in it and whatever. So, um, right, before we go, and I don't think you know about it yet, but we've got a little surprise um, coming soon. <laughs> so just watch out. They don't know, do they, Emily? Yes, they, everyone knows. Do they? Yes. About? About the thing. Yes. Oh, oh you know you that. <laughs> he gave me the go ahead today, so I sent the mail merge out instantly and I'll put it all over Facebook. Yeah, they know. Oh, so I just want to say I hope you've had a look at it because I haven't even read the email. Um, so do have a look. It's a lovely exhibition. Uh, has anyone looked at it yet or not? Yeah. Yeah. Looks yeah, amazing. We Good. Um, so yeah, well, yeah, please share it and stuff because, um, well, last year obviously we did isolation a huge success and everything and we were like we need to do something but we didn't know what <laughs> and then because of these challenges have been so successful and it's been such a joy seeing work yeah so we were like definitely i'm really proud of it and i hope you are um so yeah fucking well done ladies it's bloody we've got an exhibition i feel really excited <laughs> ah! right okay <laughs> And I will, um, well, I'll see you this time next month, I guess, if I don't see you before. Later, yeah, yeah, this time next month. Yeah. Thank you, Philippa, for doing those organising work because it can't be easy and I find it brilliant. It's so oh. good. Oh, well, that's really good. Thank you. I appreciate all the feedback. It's good. <laughs>